Hello everyone! Welcome to another Purposeful Conversations with me, Emmy, here in the PAMI Code Facebook community. Well, for today, we have a, a dynamite guest. You know, if you want to talk about resilience, you know, I think this is going to be like a master class on resilience <laughs> because her life story is something that, you know, she really turned her life around and she managed to grow her business now to a, a six-figure business. So I'm really looking forward to, um, you know, talking to our guest today, you know, picking her brain, you know, when it comes to, you know, resilience, having the motivation, keeping the fire alive, and at the same time, being quite efficient with how to um, juggle your, your family life, your business life, and, and just keeping, you know, everything up, uh, you know, and running um, for, for, for everything, really. So um, I'd like to welcome our special guest. Um, she's the part-time CEO, Janelle Lara. Hi, Janelle. Hi, Emmy. Thank you so much for having me and for that beautiful introduction. Well, thank you for joining. I'm really, really excited because I know that there are a lot of um, mama entrepreneurs, uh, you know, out there. And um, what what caught my attention, you know, when, when I was, uh, you know, looking for guests and, and I saw your profile and so on is that you are so efficient. You are passionate about what you do, um, but you also um, are able to to manage your family life as well. And on top of that, your story, you know, as far as resilience and turning your life around, that really caught my attention because for some people, when they experience a challenge in their life, you know, they actually get stuck you know, in that difficult point and, you know, it does take a bit of time before they can recover. But before we get into that, you know, for the, for those who haven't met you before, you know, tell us a little bit about yourself, you know, what is it that you do and, and how did you get there? Totally. Well, I just love this conversation because you're absolutely right. I, I think the most important, you know, takeaway, I'll just kind of hit you with the headline starting right away, is that, you know, we all have choices. We all have choices. And so you can choose to be stuck or you can choose to move forward, but that decision is 100%, you know, in your hands. And so um, my name is Janelle Lara and I'm the part-time CEO. I teach mission-oriented female entrepreneurs how to build a six or multi-six figure company while only working 20 hours per week or less. Um, and really, you know, for me, it's less about the hours. For me, 20 hours works really well. It allows me to be a stay-at-home mom to my daughter most of the week. It also allows me to, you know, give my clients the time that they need and to bring home a substantial income for my family. Um, but really, it's about living the life that you want and creating and building the life that you want. So I've got plenty of clients who are love the 40 hour per week jam and that's, that's what they love to do. I also have clients who would rather work 10 hours per week, right? And so um, really at the end of the day, the mission of the part-time CEO is to educate and to empower women to build and create the lives that, that they want. Um, and so my story begins actually in the field of education. So I have always been and still am a teacher. Um, and so I was in the field of education, actually teaching in the classroom for four years. Um, and then I moved up the ranks. I became an assistant principal, entered administration. I got a full ride scholarship to the University of Notre Dame for a master's in educational leadership. And really, you know, I, I was 25 at the time, right? But Really, I was being groomed to um, take over schools and leadership. to run schools yeah. and, and for leadership um, for the Notre Dame ACE program, who as they expand, you know, the schools, they, they want to place their people in them, right? So I was really being groomed for um, educational leadership. Um, but you know what? One of their core values, one of the core values of this program was grit, G-R-I-T, the word grit. And I... Um, I'm someone who I, I, I need balance. Um, and it's almost a compulsion for me. Like if I'm out of balance, I'm like, I can't do anything. Right. And so, and I was struggling with some mental health challenges at the time I was diagnosed with panic anxiety disorder when I was 18. Um, I also got married that, that year. And, you know, I really struggled to maintain that pace, the 80 hour weeks, mm. the, you know, being an assistant principal by day and then coming home and doing, you know, Ivy League, you know, collegiate level schoolwork at night, right? Waking up at 4.30 in the morning and collapsing in bed, you know, late at night. And um, I couldn't keep up with it. 
And of course, you know, our society, we hear it all the time. It's like hustle and grind, sleep till you die. Like <laughs> good things come to those who hustle, right? And so I really internalized that. And I was just like, what's wrong with me? Like, why can't I keep up with this breakneck pace? I'm young. I don't have a family. Like, I just felt like something was fundamentally wrong with me. Um, long story short, my husband and I, we got married in December. Um, I, because I couldn't keep up with the breakneck pace, I lost my job in January and lost my scholarship. And in February, my husband and I found out that we were expecting mm. and I was the main breadwinner. My husband was in school. And so I just kind of found myself in this position where, you know, no schools were hiring for teachers, you know, in February. Um, I was going to have to wait until August to get another teaching job, but that made no sense because I was due in November, right? It just, I, I was just dealing with this mm. conundrum of like, we can't survive off of my husband's income alone, but I cannot get, you know, the kind of job that I'm qualified for. What do I do? Yeah. So I actually went ahead and started a tutoring company and I realized how much I thrived off of a part-time, part-time work hours. Um, you know, with tutoring, you can really only tutor like Mondays through Thursdays, you know, four to six. Yeah. So I was working eight hours a week. I was able to help support our family. I was, you know, able to perform for, you know, each of my students. Um, but I also had time to, you know, dedicate to my family. I also had time to dedicate to our household. You know, I also had time to prepare, you know, to bring life into this world. Right. And so that really was kind of a wake up call for me of like, Oh, like I don't have to do that. I don't have to. Subscribe. There's an alternative. Yeah. There's an alternative. Right. And so that kind of opened my eyes. And, you know, so I did that all throughout my pregnancy. I did so well that I was able to hire a tutor to tutor for me while I was mm. you know, in my, on maternity leave. Um, and, you know, I started a couple of other companies during that time while I was on maternity leave, because don't get me wrong, like wanting to work part-time does not indicate laziness mm. in my, I, my mind was always running and I was always really excited no, really, but, but it's, I, it's being efficient with your time and choosing what to do with your time well totally and it, it's really it's efficiency but it's also um experiencing true peace and joy and knowing that you know, I am a present mother to my daughter. I'm a present wife to my husband, right? I have me time and I'm able to kind of, you know, continue my personal development and growth, right? Um, you know, things like that, that I think a lot of us just take for granted or put on the back burner because, you know, it, this, you know, our job or the next project or, you know, hitting, you know, six figures feels like, it's this urgent, important thing that we just can't ignore, right? It feels like what's something that's on fire. Um, but that leads us to take for granted, you know, the people and the relationships in our lives that are the most important. So anyway, long story long, um, after my daughter, when my daughter was five months old, we were still on government assistance at the time. And I went ahead and invested five figures into my first digital marketing coach because I loved growing mm. that company so much. And I realized I really, what I loved most about it was the business aspect of it. Um, so I decided to, you know, kind of go into the world of online business, invested five figures. It was a loan from the bank because wow. um, we did not have the money at the time. I made up that investment back in three weeks. Um, and my first client was able to quit her job, her full-time job, um, after six weeks of working with me. So I figured I was really on to something. And that's kind of how the part-time CEO was born. Wonderful. What's a, what an amazing story. I mean, to, to be in a position where it's like, okay, what am I going to do here? You know, the, 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 the situation, the timing, you know, um, having to uh, seek government assistance and to actually grow your business um, to six figures and, and also to have that that freedom and flexibility and, and being there um, for your family, having the choice um, about what to do with your time is actually really quite empowering. And it's good that you're, you're teaching others how to, how to do it as well. But when it comes to, you know, um, resilience and, and grit, as you've said, 
when when people are uh, put in the situation so for example you know at the time when you were pregnant and you know you had to rely on um uh, on government support and so on, how did you find the fire to to set up your tutoring business i mean how did you um find your courage to actually do something about it yeah and i have to say like you're right. It was courageous because that's kind of embarrassing, right? To go from being like an administrator at a school to then contacting those same parents and saying, you know, hey, I'm tutoring now, right? A couple days a week. I mean, that it feels like a big drop. And so um, I think there's a couple of things that go into that. I think first and foremost, I did not want to go back and get a job. Mm -hmm. um, my first trimester of pregnancy was really just exhausting for me um, as it is for most women. And so, you know, that first trimester, I, I had no energy and um, but I also knew that I needed to help contribute and support the family. And so really it was, I would love to, you know, create some sort of like hero story and say, well, I, you know, I did this, but really it was out of necessity, which, yeah. you know, which is, which I find is where most people find their resilience. It's like when they are between a rock and a hard place and they just have no other options but to move forward, um, that's where they find, you know, kind of what they're made of. Yeah. And so I realized I really didn't have any other options other than to create something that would allow me that flexibility that I could be in charge charge of that I could kind of, you know, hold the reins and say, you know, this is what I tutor. This is how much I charge. This is what I offer. Right. And really just creating an environment that, um, and creating a life that was going to work yeah, right with, yeah. with my, you know, with my limitations at the time. Um, and so I would say, you know, you've, I found the courage because I had to. Yeah, it's it's a necessity thing, but I think it's also a, a mindset thing. Um, to to be to be fair, because you could put two people in the exact same position. One would take your route and say, "I have to make this work. I have, you know, I have no other option. I have to get on with this and 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 deal with this and and find a way." to um to resolve this and, and that's what you did you, you created something as as a necessity but there are those um who would be in the same position and and give up you know and yeah. and say there's i have no other choice there this is it there's no other way so mm. i don't know if it you know it, it could be a mindset thing and you know it's it's the way you you see your your circumstance and in your case you you know you're looking for opportunities you're looking for ways to resolve this whereas there might be others who will just get stuck maybe they'll freeze because they just really don't know what else to do you're right about that and i have to say you know it would be a miss to say that mindset doesn't play a huge role like just in my life in general um mindset my spiritual practice i'm you know i have a very strong faith and so that for me is absolutely an anchor and i think just recognizing like something that i have always felt very strongly is that i was made for more right like i was a natural born leader growing up um i you know I really enjoy, you know, educating and empowering women. That's my the entire mission of my current company, but it's something that I've done, you know, for years before I even started my company. Um, you know, when I was 19, I wrote my first book um, for young adults and it's really been something that's kind of always been in my DNA. And so um, I think you're right. I think it was for me, it was like, all right, well, this is just the next step or the next chapter in my journey to becoming who God made me to be. And I think that belief, like that belief that I was created for something, um, is absolutely kind of what gave me that, that internal fire for sure. Amazing. Well, to be perfectly honest, uh, the conversation that I had a couple of hours ago um, was with, with Sharon, um, Sharon Stark. And we were actually talking about purpose and faith, you know, having a, a faith centered um, approach to purpose. And, and it's good that you actually um, discuss this openly. You know, some people wouldn't actually talk about their faith. And I can see that your faith. Um, actually really drove you and you know it's um you're grounded in your faith and and you have that that belief that you know these things happen for a reason and and that you have a purpose um in life so 
tell me a little bit more about that. You know, what was going on in your head and, and you know, what sort of things were you doing, you know, to, to motivate you and uplift you and, and help you to, to carry on even when things are difficult? Mm, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to kind of dive more into this because it's something that's so dear to my heart. Um, so, you know, it's, it's interesting, you know, the entire time that I was in that assist, assistant principalship, um, I was really struggling. It was a very toxic environment um, and it was actually a, a religious environment and I still consider myself, you know, wow. a very strong religious Christian, but um, I, yeah, it was, it, it was. And so um, I, you know, that's that, but I really feel that, you know, God was with me the entire time and I was there because God was giving me an example of what not to do and who hmm. not to do. Right. And so just the, the examples of leadership that I saw there were very poor. Um, and so that was an opportunity for me. And, and it's so interesting because now as an employer, right, I, you know, have am kind of you know behaving very differently from what I saw um, at that specific environment. I had I worked at other schools where the principals were outstanding, um, so I have to give credit to that as well. Um, but so in terms of of my faith during that time, I mean. I was constantly in prayer because it was like the only thing that I had to cling to. And it, it's funny, actually, that morning that I got let go, you know, you would think, oh, getting let go, like, that's a bad thing. That was actually one of the happiest days of my life. It felt like a huge weight was lifted off of my shoulders. Um, and that morning, I had literally, because I woke up every morning and I journaled, and that was kind of my prayer time with God. And that morning, I had journaled, like, God, I don't know how much longer I can take this. Like, please, like, you know, give me rest, like get me out of here, you know? And cause I had been looking for other jobs at the time. And then like three hours later I got let go. And it was like, Whoa. <sighs> it was the best way it could have happened because I got a severance. I didn't have to start at a new job the following Monday. I mean, it was just so, um, it was such a blessing. It was just such a blessing. And so, um, yeah, I mean, and I, I've journaled almost every day, you know, for years. Um, and that's, again, been my opportunity to talk to God. I've just started meditating recently, which has just been a whole nother level, yeah. um, you know, spirituality and intimacy with God. And so, um, yeah, that was, I mean, it, that was truly my rock. And I believe that that kind of gave me that solid foundation with which to spring off of and to create something, you know, truly incredible. Amazing. Well, you know what? We have a very similar story. It's like when you were talking about, it's like, oh my goodness, it, it really resonates with me because like you, um, I was also in a, in a difficult um, environment, you know, before I started my business, um, a really toxic environment and the leadership um, style wasn't really something that I would follow. And I was going crazy and I was getting sick. I was, you know, uh, psychologically unwell. And, um, you know, I've been praying and I was still in prayer and asking God, what, what, what is this? What, what's the purpose? Why, why are you making me suffer? What's right. going on? You what know, did I, I do to deserve this? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what did I do to deserve this? You know, I've, I've been, you know, I've been loyal, you know, I've, what's going on? But it turns out that, you know, that was God's way of telling me, you should get out of there. <laughs> you know, that's not the path for you. You know, there's another path for you and you should take it. And, you know, I, I was just praying, it's like, how am I going to exit? How am I going to get out of this? When is the right time? You know, I was overcomplicating things and I just prayed, just give me a sign to, to find my way out. And a couple of weeks later, mm -hmm. severance package, you know, it's a voluntary severance just mm -hmm. came up and I was thinking... I'm not ready. I'm not ready, but shall I? Well, I asked for a sign, didn't I? <laughs> so, right. you know, I, I, I took it and I, sh you know, I, I really feel so blessed that mm -hmm. that opportunity came. And I, for me, I'm thinking I probably should have left years ago, you know, yeah. to save me from all that pain. And, you know, for, for, because for me, I was just really clinging on to something that was familiar that yeah. it was my comfort so I, I was in the higher education sector and that's all I knew you know I, I've been training um, to be a lecturer all my life so I was clinging on to it until you know my body was actually um, rebelling it's like I was getting sick I was getting psychologically unwell and you know I asked for a science like what is this you know I was praying and and 
yeah, the, the opportunity came to to talk voluntary severance, and it was such such a blessing. And you know, now I'm on a different path, a completely different path, an online business path. But I I'm absolutely enjoying it, and it does take a lot of courage, a lot of grit, you know, a lot of resilience. But you know, it's 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 a fantastic journey. But Janelle, I'm I'm so glad that we've had this conversation. You know, I know that. There are so many members in, in our community um, who are also um, feeling a little bit lost sometimes. You know, some of them are starting their own business. Others are still in their profession and, you know, they are experiencing challenges. Um, when it comes to finding grit and resilience, what would you advise to them? Like, what would be effective strategies, if you like, to help them to, to find that, that resilience inside them? Totally. Well, I want to just point out something that you said earlier when you were telling your story, which was that you were like, I should have left years ago. And, you know, I felt like I needed a sign and I was waiting for a sign, but then I realized that the pain was a sign, yeah. right? So that's how it was for me too. I look back and I'm like, oh, I should have left months earlier. I was getting job offers left and right that whole fall. Um, and, I, and I didn't leave because I was you know, I wanted to be the person who stuck it out. I wanted to be the person who powered through. And it's like, I think that we have this expectation or we have this idea in our society that it's supposed to be hard. It's supposed to be painful, right? Life's tough. Get a helmet, right? Life is pain. All the things, right? And I just want to share with, you know, the members of your community that, yes, life for me is like hiking, right? A lot of times people love to say that entrepreneurship is a roller coaster, right? To me, that's really unhealthy. <laughs> entrepreneurship, like you should not be feeling, you know, amazing at nine and low. down in the depths at 10 and then up here at 11, you know, no, that's really unhealthy. Um, but it is a hike, right? And so it's like some stretches of a hike are really hard. They're all uphill right? Sometimes it's 75 degrees and it's a straight line and you've got a great view, right? Like sometimes hiking is really fun. Sometimes it's really hard, but that's how it's supposed to be. It's not, however, supposed to be excruciatingly painful, mm. right? And so it's like, imagine if you were hiking and all of a you sudden- still You still get to enjoy sharp. it. Yeah. You enjoy totally. the journey. Totally. Like if you were hiking and you had this sharp pain in your knee, that would be a symbol of, wait, I need to stop and I need yes. to kind of regroup here, right? It's not supposed to be painful. It's not supposed to be excruciating. And so really just my, you know, advice for, you know, for everyone listening is to take a pause and to, well, first of all, pause, <laughs> right? Pausing is I think hard enough for a lot of people. Like you need to pause. You need to get in alignment with your spiritual practice, right? You need to kind of make sure that you are operating at all cylinders. And if you're constantly tired, then that means that you're not, right? So first of all, pause. And then once you feel like you're in alignment, take the opportunity to ask yourself, what do I want, right? What do I want? Because this is something that so often people never ask themselves and they're just following the yellow brick road from their high school to college to marriage to kids to right and it's like you're just following this yellow brick road because that's what society society tells you it's supposed to be but ask yourself what do i want and then this entire world of opportunity opens up to you um and you know potentially becoming a part-time ceo is one of them so uh, thank you so much i mean for giving me the opportunity to share wonderful that that's i i love the hiking analogy that that actually you know it doesn't have to be highs and lows and just painful and so on you, you actually have to enjoy the experience you know there are some parts that are tricky there's yes, challenging absolutely. but you know other times it's but it's you know enjoying the journey and doesn't really have to be painful and for me since you mentioned hiking i, I actually can envision having a, a guide or having a a buddy with me because it, it becomes more enjoyable you have that support you have that other person to keep you accountable, to keep you company. And, you know, for us, you know, we, we're called the, the PAME community, PAME community, you know, 
Pame is a Greek word that says, let's go together. So, you know, in this life, you can actually take the journey together. It becomes more enjoyable. You have people around you, the support, the camaraderie, and you celebrate your wins, you share your challenges, and it's just more enjoyable that way. I could not agree more. Absolutely. Every, you know, every great coach, every great entrepreneur that I know has a team of people supporting them, both, you know, between people that they employ and contractors to coaches. So I could not agree more. It's a lot more enjoyable when you're going together for sure. Awesome. Well, Janelle, if people want to get in touch, where can they find you? Oh, totally. The best. Best way, if you feel really attracted to, you know, my energy and my mission is to start in my Facebook group. So just go to makemeapartimeceo.com and then you can join the part-time CEO Facebook community. Um, and right there in the announcements, I have an hour long training on exactly how to acquire clients, like my exact client acquisition strategy. Um, and so you can find that at makemeapartimeceo.com. Awesome. Well, thank you very much, Janelle, for um, joining us today. And thanks, everyone, for tuning in. I hope that you found our conversation helpful. Um, for me, my takeaway message for today is really that it, life doesn't have to be that hard. Um, maybe when we are experiencing pain, it's probably a sign that, you know, you might need to take a different route or maybe you might need to ask for help, you know, maybe ask for support. You might take, maybe take a different approach. But there is an alternative. We don't really have have to bend over back. I know I've been guilty, you know, doing like the 60 or 80 hour work weeks, but you know, there's another option. If it's not making you happy or, you know, if it's not making you joyful anymore, take a pause, reflect. There may be alternatives. And you know, when, when you are in that state of calm and, and gain clarity about what you want, then you can find ways to actually make it happen without causing too much pain on yourself or on others as well. All right. So yeah. thanks again, Janelle. Thanks, everyone. And we'll catch up again next time for another Purposeful Conversations with me and me here in the Pami Code Facebook group. Until then, take care, everyone. And bye for now. Bye. <laughs>